world. I have moved about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in Spine Chillers. The Creaking Door. Manufacturers of State Express 3-5's Filter King cigarettes take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. is waiting for me in the car outside. Oh, doctor, may I, perhaps I might read your palm. Such fine, strong hands have mended my grandson's bones. Let me speak the future written in your hands. Oh, well, well, all right. Let's see. Mm. We see a fine, strong life. Tells a rich story. For you, the surgery was natural. Yes, when you were young, you mended a bird's broken wing. You grew happy in the strength you gave to others. You were content in the strength of your young hands and your work for a time. Oh, yes, you met someone you loved. You married. Yeah. Then a great cloud settled over you. This cloud is in your life now. It fills you with fear. Something that you scarcely admit to yourself. Wait. I do not understand it clearly. It is... Oh. Oh, now. Now I see it. It is... Oh! Oh! No! No! What is it? Tell me. I, I see something terrible. What do you say? Tell me what is written in my head. I, I must know. Oh, go, I tell you. You know too well what I see in your hand. Go, and never come here again. There's death in your hands. <laughs> Joe, what's the matter? What did she mean? 
What could she have seen? What could she have seen? Mary and I... I must get some air. They're expecting us, John. Carl Cherney and all his friends. Yes, yes, I, I knew, Mary. Please, just for a few minutes. Let's go over to the water there, near the wharf. John, you haven't been listening to me. Is something wrong? Was everything all right? I, I can't understand what she meant. What did she see? Who? The gypsy woman. See where, John? In my hands. She saw something horrible written in my palm. She spoke of my childhood, about, about meeting you, my love of surgery. Everything she saw was the truth. And then suddenly she, she screamed. She refused to go on, talked of death. Oh, John, don't think about it. The woman was half crazed with fear for her grandchild. John, listen to me. Let's go to the party. Carl Cherney's there. I know he can help. He's just back after years of study abroad, working in the occult sciences. Black magic, palmistry. Perhaps he can... Look at the water, Marion. How tranquil and, and yet how black it is. Down there. Lean out here. You will see. There. There. John, are you listening See to those me? lights flashing on and off down there in the water? Luminous fish, each with its shining battery. I don't see anything, John. It must be your imagination. <laughs> John, what are you doing? You're going to push me in, into the water. I look in your eyes. You are trying to push me in to drown me. You will, won't you? I don't know. I don't understand what's happened. I, oh. I felt an irresistible urge suddenly. And then you scream. I, I realized how nearly I pushed you over the edge. You talk as though you had no control over yourself. As if you were an automaton. A tool in someone's hands. Someone's hands. Perhaps... My own, Marion. Perhaps that's what... what the gypsy saw. What she wouldn't tell me. Yes, that must be it. Oh, Marion, please try to understand. I, I don't know what happened just now. I, I can't even try to explain it. You said before that Carl Cherney was at the party. He's returned here after years of study abroad. Perhaps he could tell me. Perhaps he might know the answer. Tell you what, John? You said he was a student of palmistry. Perhaps then he can tell me what is written in my hands. I see the brilliant hands of a great surgeon. I see skill, certainly. A quick, decisive mind. And I see... What else do you see? I see also something tragic. Tell me what it is, Jenny. I see also death in your hands. Death. That's what it is. Death at my hands. That's what she saw too, the gypsy. That's why she feared for her grandson's life. It is there, written in feist, burnt into my hands. Death. Early this evening, at the water's edge, I nearly pushed Marion in. She said it. I was an automaton, a, a tool in someone's vast scheme greater than all of us, driving me, forcing me to fulfill the prophecy written here in these hands. Death! John. I'm glad we left the party early. Here, sit down in this chair. Oh. You're tired. I'll get something for you from my cabinet. You sure you can find it in the dark? No, there's no need to put on the lights. I'll find them. Did you speak to Carl tonight, John? Yes, I spoke to him. What did he say? Uh, nothing, Marion. Nothing at all. He was very charming tonight, wasn't he? He was reading everyone's palm. He's really very brilliant, John. Yes, I know. Do you know what he told me? What, Marion? He took my hand and read my palm. And he told me of my meeting you, of our marriage, problems we've had, the joys. And then he said something I didn't quite understand. He said he saw your name, John. 
Your name, written at the end of my lifeline. My name? Yes. What do you think he meant? Your name, written at the end of my lifeline? My name? That means that... Oh, it couldn't. No, no, it means nothing, nothing. I, I don't know what it could mean. Someone said it meant life together, John. You and I, together until the end. Oh, yes, 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 that must be it. Here, Marion, take this pill. Now, don't think about it. Take this. It'll cure your headache. What is it, John? Oh, just an aspirin. Why? Let me have that bottle. Here. Put the light on. It isn't aspirin. It isn't the aspirin bottle, John. Look at it. It's poison. You were trying to give me poison. No, Marion, no. You are. You are. Oh, get away from me. You, you were trying to kill me. That's it. You are trying to kill me. You must be mad, John. Twice tonight you've tried to kill me. First down at the wharf, you tried to push me in the water and now there. Marion, I swear to you, I didn't know. Listen to me. I... Listen to you. No, I'm going. Getting out of here. I've got to get away from you. Anywhere. I'll, I'll go away with Carl. He asked me to go with him, but I refused, saying I loved you. wanted to be with you. Be with you? You would murder me. Don't come near me. Don't you dare. Marion, wait. Don't go. Marion. Oh, Marion. Oh, no. Was I trying to kill her? No, not Marion, my wife. Isn't there any other way? I love her. Maybe it doesn't have to be her. Perhaps my name at the end of her lifeline does mean life together. My hands say death, but not her death. Death. Perhaps there is another way out. Perhaps someone else will serve to fulfill the prophecy. Perhaps if I kill someone else, someone, anyone... Then maybe I shall obtain release. Yes. Yes, that is my answer. I must kill someone. Get three fives. Get the taste. Three fives by State Express. Get the taste of international success. The taste that's uniquely three fives. Only when no expense is spared in its making can a cigarette taste so right, so smooth, so satisfying. Three fives. Get the taste. The taste that State Express created for you. The taste that has made three fives the king size cigarette of international success. Get three fives. Get the taste. Poor Dr. Elliot is seated alone in his quiet office in the hospital. He has had no sleep. A thought keeps burning itself into his brain, torturing him. Can I kill someone else? Not Marion. Can I? Who will notice what I'm about to do? So much death here in the hospital. All that is needed is a simple error, a miscalculation, the merest slip of the scalpel. And I'm free, released from the fate that is written here in these hands. But I am a doctor, a physician. I have sworn. I swear by Apollo, the physician, and Aesculapius, and Hygia, and Panacea, and all the gods and goddesses, that according to my ability and judgment as a physician, I will keep this oath forever and this stipulation. The Hippocratic Oath. The oath of a physician to his profession. The oath I swore to uphold. But I cannot listen. I cannot. Marion's death is written in my hand. This I swear. Into whatsoever house I enter, 
I will go on to them for the benefit of the sick and will abstain from every voluntary act of mischief and corruption. This I swear. Into whatsoever house I enter, I will go unto them for the benefit of the sick and will abstain from every voluntary act of mischief and corruption. This I swear. This I swear. Hello. Nurse. Miss, this is Dr. Elliot. Prepare the patient in surgery A immediately for operation. Dr. Elliot? Yes? Brilliantly done, Dr. Elliot. May I congratulate you? That was a most magnificent operation. Uh, thank you, Lowell. and magnificent operation. <laughs> but with that success, I know I cannot kill another person. I could not bring myself to kill the patient, try as hard as I would. Now, I know now that I must, that it must be her, Marion, who dies at my hand. There could be no one else. There could be no other answer. I must write my name at the end of her lifeline. Accidents, emergency, death all around me. And yet hers is the death that must come at my hands. This is what must be. Calling Dr. Peters. Calling Dr. Peters. Please come to surgery B immediately. Accident, emergency case. Calling Dr. Peters. Calling Dr. Elliot. Calling Dr. Elliot. Please call in surgery C. Calling Dr. Elliot. Oh, let me alone. Not again. Not another. Dr. Elliot. Calling Dr. Elliot. Urgent in surgery C. Uh, hello, operator. Yes, sir. Uh, get me uh, surgery C. Thank you, doctor. Hello? Dr. Elliot speaking. I can't be disturbed. I've just completed a most difficult operation. and I'm frightfully tired. But this is very serious, Doctor. I don't care how serious it is. But, Doctor, it's your wife. My wife? Why, what's happened? She was brought into the hospital just as you were leaving the operating room. She and the Mr. Carl Churney were in a terrible automobile accident. Some of them are in the emergency ward now. Well, what was the diagnosis? Both with his severe internal injuries. Immediate surgery has been ordered. Dr. Peters has already begun operating Mr. Churney. Dr. Lowers says imperative that you operate on your wife. I, I can't. Don't you understand? My hands. My name at the end. Uh, what are you saying, Doctor? Uh, oh, all right. Prepare the patient. I will operate. I must. <laughs> Arrived it. Yes, Dr. Now. He said he'd be in in a moment. But doesn't he realize that this patient's status is, is most critical? Well, well, I tell him what you said, Doctor. Well, where in heaven's name is he? Doesn't he know his wife is dying? Here I am, though. This patient needs instant operation, Doctor. This patient, as you call her, is my wife. I know that, Doctor. That's why I couldn't understand. I'm sorry, Doctor. Will you begin now? Yes. I will operate. No. You will stay and assist me. Scalpel, nurse. Hemostat, nurse. Clamp off the vessels, Lowell. Wait, Lowell. Wait with the hemostat. Wait. Dr. Elliot, the bleeding is profuse. Lowell, I said wait. I tell you what to do. Dr. Elliot, the patient's pulse is beginning to fall rapidly. Dr. Elliot, quiet. I'm in charge here. I see death at your hands, Dr. Elliot. Death at your hands. Dr. Elliot, the patient's blood pressure is taking a serious fall. At the end of my lifeline, your name, John. Your name. At the end of my lifeline. Dr. Elliot? Doctor, hadn't you better use the ligatures? This patient will require transfusion unless that bleeding is stopped. No, Lowell. 
No ligatures yet. It's all right. It's quite all right. What could it mean, John? Your name, written at the end of my lifeline. I understand what it means, Marion. The patient's pulse is very faint, Doctor. Almost imperceptible. I see death at your hands. Death at your hands, Doctor Elliot. Death at your hands. Doctor Elliot. Doctor Elliot, what are you doing standing there staring? Oh, I can't do it. I, I can't. No, take over. I, I, I can't go on with this operation. But you must. You can't stop now, Doctor Elliot. Look at me. I'm trembling all over my... My hands are shaking. I, I can't control them. You've got to pull yourself together. Oh, it's impossible. No, I can't do it. I tell you, you've got to complete this operation. If I go on, I'll kill... I'll kill her, do you understand? I'm killing her now. You've got to take over, Lowell. You've got to. Listen to me, Dr. Elliot. There's only one surgeon in the world who can successfully complete this operation. And that man is you. No, I can't. I, I won't touch her again. Dr. Elliot, look at me. I've seen your work before. I know what you're made of. I understand the tension that grips your throat, that tightens your fingers. Remember, Doctor, this woman is not only your wife, she's also your patient. Yes. Yes, you're right. Yes, she's my patient. Remember, Doctor, a woman is bleeding to death under your hands. You and you alone can save this patient. Shall I clamp off the vessels, Dr. Elliot? The vessels. Yes, yes. Clamp off the vessels. That bleeding must be stopped. Nurse. Suit your nurse. The sponge. Cut off the anesthesia. Suit your sponge nurse. Dr. Elliot. What is it, Lo? May I say something? I've had the privilege of working with many great surgeons, but sir, that operation and your behavior in that room were the most magnificent I've ever witnessed. Thank you. I didn't know how true it was that you were the only surgeon in the world who could have pulled through that, but after that grueling operation earlier this afternoon, then the tremendous strain of hearing of your wife's accident, it was no wonder you were overwrought during the operation on your wife. It was absolutely... Let's not speak of it anymore. Do you mind, Lowell? Oh, sorry, Dr. Elliot. Dr. Elliot? Dr. Elliot? Yes. What is it, Love? It's the patient, Mr. Turney. What about Turney? He was crushed horribly in the accident. Dr. Peters performed the emergency operation, but uh, I'm afraid without success. He was too far gone for man's aid. Is he dead, Love? No, he's still conscious. He's got a few minutes left. He said he had to talk to you. Oh, I know it's asking a lot, but... Would you mind, Doctor? That's all right, Lowell. I'll be glad to see him. Where is he? You wanted to see me, Journey. I haven't much time or much strength to speak. You know that I love Marion. I have always loved her. And last night, when I spoke to you, when I read your palm... I said I saw death at your hands. I hoped that would drive you to murder. I wanted you to kill. That Marion would be free to come to me. To be mine. But you said you saw my name at the end of Marion's lifeline. You knew I would understand. That meant her death at my hands. Why? I knew you would understand. I spoke to Marion after you left, after I spread your palm. I told her I loved her, asked her to come away with me. She refused. She loves you, Elliot. You alone. I knew then that even if you killed and Marion were free, she would still be yours. I would never have her. I've been mad, insanely jealous. I determined that if I could not have her, neither could you nor anyone else. And when I saw your name at the end of her lifeline, 
I told her so. I knew you must understand the meaning of those words. That you would kill her. Then you did see my name at the end of her lifeline. It is true, then, that I must kill her. Am I to have no peace until I've killed her? No, Elliot. Your name is written at the end of her lifeline. But her lifeline is very long. As long as yours. Both of you have a long life ahead of you. Together. But the death that is written in my hands... You saw it. The gypsy saw it. Death is written in my hands. You said so. Yes. Death is written in your hands. Death, the constant companion of the great surgeon. Death is with you always. Death at your elbow at every operation. Death stands by at every stroke of the surgeon's knife. Death is in every line of your hands. But you triumph, Dr. Elliot. You triumph over death. Yours are the hands of a great surgeon, a great healer, winning victory after victory over what it is your destiny to struggle against. Victory over death. Manufacturers of State Express 3 5 Filter King cigarettes invite you to listen next Saturday at 9 o'clock when they will again present. The Creaking Door.